Good morning. It's Tuesday. I'm very happy to see you and let's get started. Today we're going to have some fun. We're going to identify theatrical vocabulary and we're going to perform a scene and that's how we're going to know that we did a good job. Today's question of the day is what is your favorite movie goof? So an example of a goof would be like a mistake that a movie makes. So that would be like uh, in that Game of Thrones episode where somebody accidentally left like a to-go cup or like, I can't remember if it was like a Whataburger cup. And even though the TV show is set like in the before times, before that was a thing, it was on stage. So that was a mistake. Uh, I'm not sure what my favorite one would be. Um, but there are two that come to mind uh, right now, and that would be my mother made me watch Jaws, and there is one scene where all of a sudden, it, instead of them going up and down on the boat, they are still, and everything else around them is going up and down. And what what I believe happened was is they had to go back after they made the movie and do some reshoots with the filming, and they did it with a green screen. And so to emulate the movement, they moved the background instead of the boat. It looked terrible. It was only about like three or four seconds long, but it was a lot. <laughs> my mother didn't even notice, but I was like, oh my goodness. Um, and then there's another one that I like uh, from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, where they're walking through a forest and there's three of them. And all of a sudden the camera pans and you can see a dude holding a boom mic, which is that big microphone that dips down. And he's just like, uh, and then he like takes off running. And then the camera pans and you see him again. <laughs> so like he's still in the bad spot. I really like that one. I think that one's funny. Anyway, yeah, a lot, a lot of times you have boom mic problems where they'll like dip down over the head of the actor. <laughs> that happens often. All right. So we would do a theater exercise in the Zoom called nonverbal birthday list. And what that means is I'm going to mute everybody where they can't unmute. And then you're going to have to try and figure out who has what birthday. And then you guys are going to make a list on like paper. And then we're going to see who got the closest because we're going to unmute and then I'm going to ask everybody what their birthday is and we're going to see what the real list is and we'll see who got closest. I think that would be fun. After that, we're going to go to Canvas and we're going to talk about the roles in theater. Sorry, I moved my computer and the camera moved a little bit. Then we'll do some popcorning of scenes. We'll perform the scenes. And we'll talk about critiques, what they are, how they work, and the proper ways to do them. And the asynchronous work that you're going to do after class is you're going to answer this discussion question about critiquing. So let's go to Canvas and work on the roles in theater. All right, so we're going to scroll down on the home page and we're going to click on assignments. And when it opens, it's going to come here and we're going to click on Tuesday. So roles in theater has a link right here. You can click on that. It can also be found under modules. So partner scenes. Let's talk about some certain roles that you would have while doing your scenes. Everything in red is a vocabulary word. All right. And what that means is you will eventually have a quiz where it's going to ask you about these vocabulary words. So what is a playwright? Playwright writes the play. So when you're in a, in a team, in a breakout room, and you have a scribe, the scribe is functioning as the playwright. They are writing down what you guys are discussing. What is a director? They oversee the production. Their job is to unify all the aspects from acting. So they can do all these different things and and usually in a production the director is the one who is defining the vision so they're the ones who are saying this is how the light will be this is what the sound will sound like for our purposes our director is overseeing the production in the way of making sure that we're on task making sure that we're making our decisions quickly 
that we have our BME and uh, that we are not, you know, losing time to arguing. We're, we're staying focused, we're staying on task, we're getting our scene done. Forgive the bad lighting. I left the ring light at school, guys. I'm so sorry. What is an actor? An actor meshes the words of the playwright in the direction of the director and brings the character to life. So they are the ones that are doing the acting. They are saying the lines, they are doing the movements, they are doing all of the things that bring your story to life. Everyone in the breakout room will be an actor, even if you're a playwright and a director, okay? So everyone is an actor. At this point, we would go back and leave Canvas and we would popcorn our scenes. We talked about popcorning last week. We talked about the steps that you go through. You pick your topic. You vote on your topic once majority wins. You define who is who in the scene. You create your BME and then you practice over and over and over and over again until the cows come home or I call you back from the breakout room. At that point, you would then perform we probably won't have time for everyone, maybe one or two groups, depending on how big your class size is. Some of my classes are really big and we have to have like four or five breakout rooms. Some of my classes are small and we only have one or two. So depending on your class size, we have some performance. Now, we've performed. It was great. I loved every second of it. Now let's talk about critiquing. After the performance, I would have you do a critique. So a critique would include these things here. We've been talking a lot about articulation, how clearly we're speaking. Were the actors speaking clearly? If they were, then a critique would be, I liked how clearly you were speaking, or you were not speaking clearly enough, and then you need to provide a way to help them. Perhaps working on some tongue twisters before your scene could help you with your articulation. You never say a negative critique unless you have a solution and you always frame it in a way that is positive. You always want to say a good thing before you say the negative thing to protect everyone's feelings because art is subjective. And even though you may feel these certain ways that they did a good or a bad job, you need to understand that somebody over there may have a totally different opinion. The key word here is opinion. It is your opinion. Now, if everyone in the room could not hear them, then everyone in the room could not hear them. But that doesn't mean we need to make them feel bad. That means we need to say, hi, while your acting was pretty, was really good and I really liked what you did, I struggled to hear you. So perhaps we could work on projection so that we can all enjoy the wonderful acting that you're doing. That way it protects the actor's feelings and it still tells them what they need to work on, right? So things that you could talk about, the way that they're speaking, all of these vocalization qualities right here, could you hear them? Were they in character or were they just being themselves? Now we can't really do blocking and movement <laughs> because we are on Zoom but blocking and movement were you able to see everybody did anybody stand directly in front of somebody and you couldn't see them for the longest time were they moving awkwardly like over there like was it wooden or stiff vocal quality all of these over here are vocal quality anything that has to do with the voice is vocal quality were they talking like this oh oh my goodness it is her that would be vocal quality, all right? Did the actor help to tell the story or did they distract from the story? Because sometimes you get in a team and you'll have somebody who does something called steamrolling. I am terrible about steamrolling. When you have somebody who's very, very creative and has lots and lots of ideas, they have a tendency to take over, all right? And I'm so bad about it. <laughs> it's, it's a problem for me. I try and work on it. 
uh, sometimes that's what happens. Now, it's okay if you have somebody who steamrolls and you're in a group of somebody with a whole bunch of people who doesn't want to do anything. Like, that's great. Like, if everybody in my team is, like, silent and refusing to talk, then all of my ideas are going to be welcome and voted on, and that's wonderful. But if you have a bunch of people who are trying to be in control and you're all just fighting and arguing about it, that can be a problem. So if I get into my scene and I'm doing my scene and we're all working together and we're telling the story, then that's great. But if I'm trying to take control the whole time, or if I'm going above and beyond to steal focus so that you will look at me, then I would be distracting from the story. And we might need to call attention to that. Again, in a nice, kind, and constructive way. Which actors stood out? So they stood out in a good way, not in a I'm pulling focus kind of a way, in a wow, they were really good kind of a way. And what made their performance good? Well, they were really into their character. I really believed them. They had believability. When they told me they were a chicken, I was like, wow, they are super a chicken right now. Because they had the, the head movement and the arms and they were, they were making the chicken sounds and they were doing it the entire time. You really believed them as an actor that they were a chicken or whatever their character is. I just like saying that because it sounds funny. If we had time, oh, what, who had difficulties? Like, and what could have been done better? Like, okay, they were a chicken. Um, they did not do well. They just kind of stood there and spoke. You didn't think they were a chicken. You didn't know what they were. Um, they didn't do any physical movements uh, to show that they were a chicken. They weren't using their voice to show they were a chicken. They weren't saying anything that alluded to them be a chicken. Uh, what could they have done better? And then what you would say is, perhaps you could throw in some words about your eggs. Perhaps you should refer to your feathers. Maybe you could throw a head movement in there. That would be a constructive way to help them. If we had the whole rehearsal process to do again, what could we have changed to make it better? So if our characters we're not being loud enough, then perhaps in your rehearsal time in the breakout room, you could practice being louder. And that doesn't mean yelling. Remember, that means talking from your diaphragm. That means supporting your voice in a way that sends your voice out. Remember how we talked about that? I showed you the graphic and we did the breathing exercises. How if you strengthen that muscle and you fill your lungs with air and then you use the muscle to push up, the sound that comes out is stronger and it will go further. So yelling is not what we want. Yelling also hurts your throat. If you use your diaphragm, the loud sound does not come from your throat. And you can feel when it's coming from your throat. Which part of the play did you personally connect to and why do you think this connection happened? So I watched the scene and y'all did great, but I personally connected to the chicken because of their protective nature over their little baby, over their little baby eggs, and how much they wanted to make sure that those eggs were safe and sound. I really connected to that as a teacher because I wanna make sure that my little theater babies are safe and sound. So that's what I mean by personal connection. What part of the scene did you connect to? And then you tell me how you connected to it. All right, that's what we would do in class. Asynchronously, what you're gonna do is this discussion post. It is also right here, out of class, asynchronous. It's called acting critiques. So it tells you what a critique is, in case you've forgotten, a detailed analysis and assessment of something using uh, constructive criticism. Constructive, helpful, not mean, helpful. So then you guys are gonna try it. Now I embedded this video only using Canvas, no YouTube, so it should play. This is a link to the original YouTube video on YouTube. So if this presents a problem for you and you have a cell phone, then you can watch it on YouTube. But if you're one of those people who only has the iPad and you have to watch it not on YouTube, then you're gonna need to watch this. Now the first little bit of it is not gonna be easy to hear. 
So do not think that something is wrong with your iPad because you cannot hear it. That's all I will say about it. You will then go through these exact same questions the same way we just did together. Now here is an example of how I would like you to fill out your post. All I did was go through those questions and write them down. I gave you some examples of how you can fill in your blank. The vocal qualities of the actors is good or bad because I can or can't hear and understand them or can and can't know who they are or whatever your opinion is. I can or can't hear the actors during some, most, or all of the scene. The actors do or do not help to tell the story because, because or by exhibiting whatever your opinion is. So they did this thing and it helped me or they did this thing and it was bad. Don't say bad, just be like, it didn't help. <laughs> Nora and Torvald. So you get to pick which character. There are only two characters in the scene. Added to or took away from the story by doing whatever that they did that you felt away from the story or added to the story my favorite character or favorite actor of the two actors was nora or torvald i don't know the actor's name so i just put the character's names to help i think that nora or torvald did a good or bad job they could have done better by and then this would be the constructive criticism part they could have what should they have done to do a better job i think they could have practice tongue twisters, played projection games, worked on vocal drills. If you have a different opinion, please put your opinion. In rehearsal, they could help improve on their speech or delivery of dialogue. I, and whichever you think, this is all you, you do not have to use the things that are in the parentheses. You can write your opinions, all right? I personally connected to Nora or Torvald because of my opinion. And then give it a ranking. What out of five stars? Five stars is the best. Zero is the worst. So rank them. Now you will not be able to see mine until you reply. That's how I have it set up. You have to reply before you can see the other people. It just helps cut down on the copying. This is my personal opinion of the video that is on there. Overall, I gave the scene three out of five stars. So it's, it's not terrible, but they definitely had some problems. And of course, I added what they could have done to fix it. You always wanna start with something positive when you're doing a critique in person to protect the feelings of the actors. So is, as you read, you will see that I do point out good things that they did. If I was standing in front of Nora and Torvald or on Zoom with them and I was giving them this critique, I would start with the good things that they did. I would say, look, you did a very interesting choice where you were very innocent and you had this real innocence about your character and a wide-eyed naivete look to the world. I really loved that but I couldn't hear you. And that was a serious issue. So all the good things and then the bad things. That way you protect their feelings and you can still help them to be better actors. Well, alrighty then, oh, let's go on. At this point, we would check for understanding. We would see what you learned about critiques today. If we had time, we'd take the five minute break, but uh, there's a very good chance we won't have time. <laughs> I know I have that on there every every day and we don't always do it and I feel really bad about it, but I think that y'all would probably like to leave a little earlier and have your five minute break at the end of class rather than in the middle, but we'll see how much time we have. Uh, at this, oh no, sorry. You would then put a one, two, three, or four in the chat, guys. If you put a three or four, put the question in the chat. That way I can answer it for everybody. Because if you have a question, there is a very high probability that other people have the same question. So if a whole bunch of you write the same question in the chat, then I know that I need to go backwards and reteach that to you guys, all right? It's helpful for me. And the chat is private. Nobody else can see it but you. 
all right? And I don't usually call out names for the small group part. I say lots of ones, lots of twos, lots of threes. I don't call you out and say, ooh, uh, psh, Marianne had a four today, wow. I'm not gonna do that, okay? I'm not gonna do that. So please feel free to put your questions in the chat or raise your hand and I'll call on you. At that point, my ones and twos, if they were good to go, they would be released to go and critique on their discussion to watch the, the video of Nora and Torval, this video right here, and they would be released. And then our threes and fours would stay and we would do any reteaching as necessary. Also, one thing that we do at the end of class is sometimes if we have time, we play more improv games. So if you are a winner or two and you wanna stay and play the improv game, stay. You can't hurt to get a little reteaching before we do the improv game. So that is our class for Tuesday. I hope you had a good time. I hope you were at the Zoom. Please, please come to the Zooms. If you're struggling to do the work, the Zooms will vastly help you do them. All right. Well, I hope that you have a great day, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.